Good morning. If you're just joining us, welcome. This is your host, Keely Austin. It looks like as of right now, we have 48 participants on the line. We are always looking to get more than 100 people on this call, so make sure that you reach out to your team. We do not want any ICMs left behind. Our trainer today is Dane Clark. Before Renatus, Dane Clark had two jobs. He was working for Apple, he was in the back, and he was actually kind of shy. He was also a roofer. He has uh, fair skin, red hair, so obviously as a roofer, you're in the sun a lot, and so that was not his cup of tea. He did that because he, his dad was a roofer, so it seems like he kind of just fell into roofing because family was doing that. He was barely making ends meet. He started looking for other income opportunities, and he ended up finding Renatus. He plugged into the system, he listened to his mentor, and applied Velocity Banking to pay down debt and use leverage as a down payment for a duplex. He lived in one side of the duplex and rented out the other. Fast forward to today, he's raised over $6 million from investors to lend on various real estate transactions. And his secret for that is consistency and frequency. Now he's growing his team, he is recognized as a key leader by our CEO, Bob Snyder. He is a part of our um, President's Advisory Council in training, so he's a PIT team member, and we are so very fortunate to have him as our trainer today. I'm excited to hear what Dean has to share. Good morning, Dean. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning, everybody, as well. I'm uh, super excited and stoked to be here. I've got some good stuff for us. Um, and just really quickly, I want to talk about uh, regionals. So I, I just got uh, reached out to by Mr. Mike Huggins. I think it was yesterday, yesterday or the day before, you know, one of those. The days are all meshing together for me now. But, uh, but he just asked me to speak and, and he, he actually gave me a specific topic. So I'm super, super stoked. I'm going to try my best and not spoil it. But, but one thing I want to talk about in, in, in regionals, I remember coming to my very first one. It was actually like while my wife and I were kind of in the buying uh, process and, and they invited us to come to just like for the last few speakers, you know, they said, oh yeah, it's like, it's a super cool event. Come down and, and see what's going on. And, and if you guys have ever heard me, um, talk about my story that was actually one of the meetings that my wife looked over at me at the end and she's like oh yeah oh yeah like Dane you have to do this even though I was I was uh I was all um oh what do they call it up and down up and down I was like yeah let's do this because I'd see all the people that were excited and, and come down and, and hear other people's energy or, or feel other people's energy and I was like yeah and then and then I'd go home and be like, oh, yeah, there's no way I can do this. Like, this, I would suck at this. There's no way. I, I can't talk to people. I can't talk to, you know, I'm shy and uh, all that stuff. But, but uh, so this year I, got, I did get to see a little bit of a sneak peek because I, I, you know, as they were inviting me to speak, I got to see a sneak peek of all the lineup of who's coming. And if, if there's any way that you can make it to the regional, here in Salt Lake City, I would do everything you possibly can to be there. It is going to be amazing. I'm super, super stoked. So, but as you all, as you guys all know, I love to, to uh, report accountability. And so if you guys wouldn't mind, I would love to everybody come. We got 63 people. Everybody come off a of mute. Tell us how many people you had in a meeting between today and a week ago today whether that was the first exposure, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, um, follow-up, whatever. So type into the chat as well. Can you hear me? Let's see, 678-886-6573. Yeah, this is William Ricks in Atlanta. Uh, I've got one person coming this week. Atta boy. Good job. Good job. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at my calendar here real fast and see, let's see, one, two, three, four, 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 four,
So I'm going to report that. Um, great job, Rhonda. Great job, Sandra. Ruthie, Ashley, awesome. Good job, good job. Amy, two and two are coming to the property tour on Saturday. Awesome. Property tours are crazy powerful. Two in Denver, two in New York. Awesome. Uh, Cecilia had four. Holy crap, you guys are amazing. Good job. Um, Esther had eight. Holy cow. Job, Esther, that's awesome. Uh, Martha had two. Amazing. Great job. Um, all you other people that are on the phone, let's see, we've got a bunch of them. Come off of mute, hit star six and tell us how many people, even if you had a, a big goose egg and it's a, it's a zero, I still report and say, you know what? I didn't have any, but I've got some plans. So come off of mute, hit star six, tell us how much, uh, how many. We've got 71 people now uh, on the call. Let's see, we've got, oh, where did I miss? Uh, or some, Martha had two, Tyler Mead had two, great job. Jack had one, Matthew, one, um, great, good job. Good, good job being honest. The cool thing about this is just because you're willing to do this and, and be accountable and show everybody else, it's going to drive more success your way. Watch what happens this next week, brother, and I'll, and, uh, and I'll be watching you. Uh, Patricia had three. Great job. Jessica had three at the property tour. Great job. Anybody else want to come off of mute? Just feel free to interrupt me. Hit star six and, and give, us, uh, give us a shout out. Uh, let's see. We had Joanne had two at the property tour in Arizona. Good job. Uh, Melissa. Oh, man, you guys are getting it. So, Melissa, you are going to have something coming your way this next week. Just take a little bit of action, and, and I'm, I'm, I'll be watching you next week as well. Same, same with you, Dan. Um, excited to hear back from both of you guys. I don't have any, but working on a great job. Uh, Alicia, Levi had four. Dude, you guys are awesome. Holy crap. So cool. We got to get started. So, so keep on posting those in there, and, uh, and I'm going to go ahead, and, and let's, start, let's start talking the training. Oh, I, have to, I just have to look at one more. Bill, one last night, eight possible guests tonight great job two of those are follow-ups awesome great job guys all right so let's let's bump over here and i'm gonna start a brand new training today is october 2nd mastermind i love just tracking everything i do um oh you know what? i should talk about that really fast so so for you guys like every time you sit down and have like a conversation um i i I love the drawing on a napkin effect. So you, you'll see that I use this little OneNote app. It's free. Uh, I mean, don't, if you don't already have an iPad or that has a pencil or, or a, an, uh, what do they call it? The surface thing or whatever, the, the, the other thing that's not Apple that has some kind of pencil, don't, don't just go buy one, right? Make, make your first dollar. That's what I did. I make your first dollar in in your business and use that dollar to go get you some tools um hundred percent possible I, I ended up making around you know twenty thousand dollars or so before i ended up buying my first my first uh, ipad and i made sure that it had that little this little pencil thing because you'll notice like look at all of these people that i have met with over the the years i save everything everything and, and so you can, I can go back and see like, oh man, I made a, I made a great chunk of change off of this. Um, this person said, no, like I, I, I saved everything. So consider doing something like that. Cause then you can go back and see your growth. In fact, I was even using it as a training last night with a, a new student and I showed him the very conversation that I raised a hundred thousand dollars, you know, when I was still freaking new and you could tell that <laughs> you could tell I was like stumbling over myself. And, and then I showed him one that I just did last week and how just like the difference in my growth, it was, it was really, really neat. So, so just one little side note there. I love um, just sharing, or, or sorry, I love saving all of my, uh, all of my stuff, all the stuff that I'm doing. So now I have to figure out where in the world, there, there it is. All right, so October 2 Mastermind. Um, I, a couple of things that have been pretty heavy on my mind lately, 
Um, and, and also, I missed you all. Missed you all last week. I heard that Taylor did a great job to come in and tell how she became a five star and made and made her first five star or, or after five star cash combo uh, sale. And in, in just a matter of just a couple of months and what she did. So, so I heard great things. I'm excited to listen back to that, but, but uh, missed you all last week. I was in Chicago and I had the opportunity to go to, you know, it wasn't Renatus related. It was just, just like straight entrepreneurs that were in from um, all over the country and all different industries. It was really, really neat. And you know what, you know what I learned from going to this, I mean, it was non-real estate. I wanted, I, just, I wanted to try it just to kind of see what happened, but it was just for entrepreneurs, non-real estate. Um, and so I came in as just a real estate entrepreneur, basically. And there were people that you know, did, did hair. There were people that um, did like blow up things. Um, what do they call those? Those giant blow up toys that, that kids jump on and slide down and, and whatever. Uh, I mean, this guy is a multi-million dollar business and that's all he does is just show up at these parks and do stuff like that. Um, insurance, I mean, you name it. And you know what I found when I would introduce myself as, uh, and, and every time I said, oh, I'm in real estate investing, people thought I was a realtor. So I started switching it up. I said, you know what? I invest in real estate and that's all I do. And like the, the reactions that I would get, I mean, it was so crazy in, in all, you know, in these meetings like this, I mean, that's the reason they're all there, right? We're all there because we want to network and, and you know, kind of flex our muscles, if you will, as entrepreneurs and, and, and see if we can drum up some business. It was so easy. It was so easy for me to get somebody interested in what my business did just because, I mean, that the, the concept of real estate or, or I'm, I'm going to switch it now the concept of investing in real estate. I mean, everybody is interested in that. It was so cool. It was, it was almost as if I had like a cheat code that I had the coolest business to talk about from everybody else. Cause everybody else wanted to like talk and talk to me about my business and everyone wanted to talk to me about what I was doing. And, and I was like, I became kind of, you know, and, and I don't mean this in, in any kind of prideful way, but I, I became kind of like famous in the in the three days that we were all together because i was getting people like come to me and be like oh yeah somebody else i met somebody else and we were talking about this real estate and they're like oh my gosh you gotta talk to that dang guy you gotta talk to that dang guy. he's got he's really telling he has red hair you know you, you can't miss him and and so i got i had people just like coming up to me and and asking questions about what i do and 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 it was awesome like being able to talk about, yeah, I invest in real estate, but I also work with a, a big team that teaches real estate investing. And it was super, super cool to see the reaction uh, of people. Like I drummed up so many leads from just literally just talking. Oops, there's only one L and there's only one L and talk, huh? Just talking there's an I right there, real estate investing. Or like I said, I, sh I shifted it just because everybody thought I was a realtor in the beginning. Talking, investing in real estate. I-R-E, oops. Anyway, you guys get what I'm saying? So just talking real estate, people, everyone wanted to talk to me and, and just and, and share and ask questions. And, and so... Um, I've already, I've already done a couple of follow-ups from that meeting and, and orders are going in. Like it's, it's, it's exciting. So just one thing I wanted to, to, to note about this, um, it's not, it's not the thing that's been weighing on my mind, but in your life, as you become an investor in real estate, it becomes a lifestyle I've noticed. Like, and, and you guys have all heard me say this, that, you know, I drive my wife crazy sometimes because well, I will go anywhere and somehow, somewhere when I'm meeting somebody new, I'll sneak in like, oh yeah, I, I invest in real estate. And, and I just, I just like to bring up the topic. That's it. And see where it goes. You guys have all heard my box training. And if you haven't, I'll, I'll, I'll probably do it again here in a little while. But, uh, but my box training is that of, 
just finding out which box people fit in. Are they, are they interested in passive investing in real estate? Are they interested in active? Do they have properties that they have some trouble on? Or, or are they just plain old not interested in investing in real estate? And so just bringing up the topic, I was able to, to how do I say this? Uh, not manipulate the conversation, but um, um, basically just steer the conversation through a few questions and things like that and, and end, up, end up with like, oh my gosh, we should talk. We should totally talk. So, um, so anyway, just some food for thought there. Just bring up the topic of real estate with anybody you meet because when you become, a, or, or you will become, Mark my words on this. You will become a successful investor of real estate if it becomes your lifestyle, and you want to talk to people. You know, you want to talk to anyone and everyone about it. Whoever doesn't matter, whoever you talk to, you want to bring it up. Okay, and when they see your passion, it doesn't matter. It does not matter how successful you've been yet. I mean, I I got some credibility zero stories that that people would be like, oh, there's no way. There's no way. Credit, you know, you had credibility zero. How did you do that? You know what? I'm Renatus educated. And I just knew how to say the things that, uh, that the, in, the instructors and the, and, and the, the um, actually, I'm not going to call them professors, but the instructors were saying, and my other mentors and, and people that, that uh, were already investing in real estate, say those same things and people would tilt their heads and be like, holy crap, how do you know this? And guys, I'm not a smart guy. Like, I, I just followed exactly what they were saying and then shifted, you know, as I went, as, as, I, as I failed forward. Um, but anyway, okay, so topic I wanted to talk about today. So, so this, I, I, it's, uh, it kind of goes along my own personal development in my Renatus career. I, uh, when I was newer, I was in my, I was in my first year. Um, and, and I had not, you know, had not made any money yet. I was still in that, in that mode, uh, where I'm, I'm calling it, I'm going to call it hustler because in, in, in Renatus, you have this hustler beginning where you haven't done anything yet for yourself. And, or maybe you've done just a little bit, you know, you've made some money, you've, you've done some stuff, but but you're having a hard time just breaking into the next level and, and, and you know, either replacing your income in, in, in your marketing and or real estate or, or even just, uh, you know, matching it, you know, whatever. But, but there was a moment in time that I became very frustrated, actually, early on. It was in, this, it was in that first year. I became extremely frustrated and, and to the point where the person who enrolled me in Renatus and, and basically collected my 20,000 so, so I could be, uh, you know, own my combo. Um, and he helped me find my 0% cards. And, and um, so, you know, I put, I put the 20,000 on 0% cards. I had not yet paid it off. And uh, I hadn't closed any deals. I was, I was failing. I was, I was taking action, but I was failing. You know, things were not panning out for me the way that I had, had envisioned them or hoped. And, and, and I found myself extremely frustrated. My wife had just had the baby. Because um, if, you, if you recall, we, we, she was six months pregnant when we purchased Renata. So she had just had the baby. And, and uh, he, he was in the, the, the newborn intensive care unit for you know, just a little while and, and, and we had him, he was home and, and doing great. But anyway, I, I had not yet had any results. And I remember thinking about the person that enrolled me and I, I started developing this like hate, if you will. Like I was, I was, I mean, I started becoming angry. And, and so there was this, this, you know, sh this season that, I started blaming. I started blaming the, you know, the person that, that invited me down and, and showed me, you know, the, the different events and, and helped me see the value. And, and, you know, I was, I started blaming him thinking, Oh my gosh, like he got me, he got me. Like he, 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 I mean, I signed up for this stupid 
uh, at the time, <laughs> at the time, I, see, I signed up for this stupid scam um, MLM real estate company, you know? <laughs> and so I, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, what have I done? And, and, and anyway, so just like this, this animosity towards this person. And, and sure enough, when that happens, I, I started, or I should say I stopped. I stopped coming down to meetings. You know, I still would watch my classes because like, you know, I spent the money. I'm just, I'm just going to watch my classes and, and just, you know, see where that goes and just bust through these things. And so I, uh, you know, I stopped plugging in and just stayed home, did, you know, went to work, you know, my roofing job and, and would watch classes as much as I could and just plow, plow, plow. Anyway. So, but, but then something happened to me and I, I, I cannot exactly recall where the thought came from, but, uh, but, you know, I, I guess I could argue that, that maybe it was kind of a spiritual awakening somehow, but there was this moment that in my mind, I started like asking myself, like, what in the world are you doing? Like, why, why in the world are you blaming everybody else and, and for, for, your own, for your own success or the lack thereof? And, and I just had this overwhelming feeling, uh, this overwhelming feeling that I needed to take 100% ownership. of my success, 100% ownership. And to the point where, you know, at the time, I'll have to admit that I still had the animosity towards this person that enrolled me into Renatus. But, but at the time, I, I was like, you know what? Screw that person. I'm not, you know, yeah, they, they can go and do whatever they want and be successful, but what about me? Like, if, if I wanna have success, then I'm just going to have to do it. You know, it's funny because I was, I was actually, um, I was actually doing it like in spite at this moment in this, in this transition. So here I am in spite, you know, you know what, screw him. If he's not going to help me and how, and, and get my, you know, help me get my success, then I'm just going to do this on my own. And so e even though I would say that's kind of the wrong way to, uh, to go about it, where you just like, you know, what, screw everybody else. I'm just going to do this on my own. I did something right in that moment. And that was that I just took extreme ownership of my success. And, and so here I found myself and I've got somebody off of mute. Did you, uh, did you want to say something, Tonya? Oh, here, I'll, I'll mute you. Okay. So, so I find myself, um, in spite, you know, still, still negative feelings towards other people. And I'm, I'm just going to do this. I'm just doing this on my own. And so, so I started, you know, really diving into my classes and actually watching them like religiously. I would, I sat down, you know, just like I talked about, I would, I would bust out my calendar and say, all right, I'm watching classes on this day, this time I'm doing this. Um, at this time, I'm going to go to this event just because I know I'm going to need some kind of relationships and connections and, and I'm going to set some goals. And, and, you know, in spite, just like spite, 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 like, ah, you know, screw them. I'm just doing this. I'm going to do this myself. Okay. And then I, I had, you know, here I was, you know, around other people now and putting myself, like, it's so funny. I, I started just doing all the, the things that, that are good principles, but not for the right reasons. <laughs> yeah. And, and then by just being around people. So, so in, in the Renatus, um, the, the run out is template, if you will, the template to success. You know, you go through your essentials, you finish that, you go through your AIT. But in the meantime, this, this is just the knowledge currency. So, so here I was, you know, gaining all this knowledge currency and then finally starting to build the relationship currency of making friends in the real estate investing world. And, and I found myself like, oh man, I'm going to need, I'm going to need to build a team too. Like I'm going to have to open up conversation with like a, a, a private, private lender, a private equity lender, a, a title agent, an attorney, a CPA, a bookkeeper. 
Like, you know, and I find myself scared, scared to talk to these different people. Um, but but I, I, st- I just started doing it and opening up, you know, creating these relationships. And, and before long, I found myself like, holy cow, if I, if I went and made an offer on a property and they said yes, like I, it, was, it was crazy. I found myself beginning to understand exactly what I needed to do over time. You know, this did not happen overnight. But, uh, but as I started learning, I'm basically just following this template of gaining knowledge, gaining relationships. And so I would block off my calendar and say, all right, I'm going to be networking, uh, you know, during these hours of the day, and I'm going to be watching classes these hours of the day. And then when I was, I was done watching my classes, I was like, all right, we're just going to go straight up networking. Like I'll be, I'll be networking with peers during this time of the day and I'll be networking or, you know, like with, with uh, we're not as students during these times of the days. And I'll just be networking with non Renata students on these, on, you know, on these days or on, you know, on these hours during these days and just making calls and things like that. And so I find myself like just, and it's so funny because in my mind, I wasn't following the, the template in my mind. I'm like, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> but the things that came to my mind of like how, if I were to own, if I were to own my own success, what would I do? I started asking myself questions like that. And, uh, and I wish, you know, it would probably take me a minute to find, um, to find my notes, but I even like would write out notes and say, all right, if I'm going to, if I'm going to own my own success, what's it going to look like? How, you know, what am I going to have to do first? What do I have to do next? What am I have to do after that? And then all the way to making money, you know, and, and working backwards and things like that. And it's so funny because basically the things that I was coming up with where I was asking myself that question of if I were to be successful, what would it look like? And, and what would it take? I was basically just doing or writing down the, the principles of this template and doing them. And like I said, it started out in spite, but over time, my, I feel like my heart began to soften just a little bit because I was, I was gaining these relationships. I was be, I was, developing more confidence and 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 things you know things were I could see the light of day that money was about to come my way and it's so crazy that feeling I bet I bet a lot of people on this call have this feeling right now where you're you're feeling like you're feeling like you're pushing this boulder up this mountain and you're just like you can't see where the end is, but, but you're feeling like, you know what, it's gotta be like right there. And I remember feeling that so many times in my Renata's career where you just feel like you're pushing this boulder, pushing this boulder. You can't see the top. And if you try to peek around the top, then it's going to fall down the bottom. Right. And and so you don't want to go there. And then it would happen. Like I would, I would, I would get it. I would get the boulder over like a little rock and I could rest for a second. I almost felt like, <laughs> you know, but, uh, and then just keep on going. But, but the one thing that I, I want everybody to take away from this, that's the, and I don't know why this has been weighing on my mind so much, but just if, if you were to ask yourself those questions, if I were to take extreme ownership, of my success, of my future, what would I do? You know, start asking yourself questions like that. If I were to run a multi-million dollar real estate investing and marketing company, what would I do every day? Like, how would I act? How would people see me when I communicate with them? You know, when I meet somebody brand new for the first time and I'm, and you know, just, you know, you're doing that little dance of, of that uh, courting or whatever you want to call that um, to, to, you know, to see if they might become a lead or a prospect for your business, your business model. How would I want them to see me? Like, what would I want them to hear me say that would cause them to be like, holy cow, I, I want I want to explore doing business with you. And so, and so I, I found myself, you know, doing all of these things and, and, and starting to feel like 
I'm, I'm getting so close, you know, pushing this boulder up, but money started coming in and, and things, and things began to change a little bit because now I'm building, building my knowledge. I'm building my relationships. I'm spending, I'm, I'm still, I'm still grinding at this moment. You know, my time wise, I'm still, you know, working my day job. I'm still, uh, busting, you know, grinding afterwards to try and find deals to, to, to bring students to Renatus and, and have them check it out. I'm still busting it, you know, back in the day and in, in here in Utah, we don't, we don't do signs anymore just because the, a lot of the cities got together and basically shut it down. But, but, uh, but, you know, I was doing signs in the middle of the night where my wife would drive the car, the, the infant baby would sleep in the back seat and I would, I would, jump out the passenger with a bunch of signs in my hand and go stick them in the ground and uh and just do that through the middle of the night from usually around 11 30 p.m to 1 30 maybe 2 a.m one night a week and uh <clears throat> anyway so so ex extreme ownership is really what i want i wanted to talk about today because when you do that people, I mean, people notice and it does not matter. So if I, if I go back and you guys have, you know, not, maybe not everybody has seen this, but if I go back to my, my raising money career and, uh, and, and so, so here I am today and we've done all these different deals. I've got $4.28 million basically in a private line of credit. And, um, I've raised probably double that, but this is just like my current um, and, and all these different deals that we've done over, over the last, you know, couple of years, I look at that first one and, you know, I, I actually leave this one blank on purpose because this was the very first deal that I raised money when I had credibility zero, but I was asking myself those questions. If I were to take a hundred percent ownership of my success, how would I talk to people like Glenn? How would I, how would I, you know, how would I, what would I say to him? And, and so in that, in that moment of doing that first deal where I raised like all the money, I did all this, I, I called the title agent myself. I called, you know, the, the attorney to, to write it up. Like I, I didn't call any, any uh, other like students to ask for help. Like literally I was just like, I want to do this on my own. It's kind of funny. And I didn't even make as much money on this deal. Mostly because I didn't, uh, I didn't ask for any of those ideas from other people and tell them about what I was doing and ask, I didn't ask for help. Mostly because of pride, but regardless, when I had credibility zero on, on this column before, and, I, and what I ought to do is, is add like, a bunch of these things go so it illustrates like yeah like absolute zero credibility because of that extreme ownership glenn could see it in my eyes i mean he knew so everybody on this call you, i mean you guys we are all <clears throat> actually i want to talk to each of you guys individually you i mean you are an entrepreneur now you are the type of person that most people in America will never be. You are the ones that change the world because you're willing to go out and take the risk to create something that not many people are willing to do. Like you are the ones that are willing to, to stick your neck out there and say things and, and, and basically like put goals out there in front of other people like, you know, just like I did Glenn, I, I told Glenn early on, Hey, I'm gonna, I'm going to find a deal. I'm going to find a big discount on a property and we're going to do this deal. And, uh, and, and when I find it, I'd love to, to connect with you. Okay. And even people that I, I started bringing in as students. Okay. So, so you guys <clears throat> are, are down to the individual again, you will find that, that credibility. You will find that as you take action, even though you don't feel like you have all the credibility in the world, it will come 
if you seek it. It will come if, you know, you stick your neck out there just a little bit. So one of the, I mean, I still do this because I have, you know, I have credibility zero when it comes to being debt free. Like, no, I have debt right now. I have, I have some house debt. I've, I owe, I owe some more on my, on my truck. I mean, everything else is, is paid off, but between the house and the truck, I mean, I owe like, oh man, 300 some odd thousand dollars in, in debt. So I have credibility zero in being debt free or the way I like to say it is owning everything I have free and clear, but I'm still, I'm still, I'm sticking my neck out there right now. Like a lot of people that I talk to and now let's see how many people are on this call. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to go big on this goal. We got 93 people on this call and, and I'm going to tell everybody on this call right now, something that I have credibility zero in and that is being debt free. My, I just set a huge goal to, to be 100% debt free by this time next year, basically before my 31st birthday. I would like to own my house, the truck, and everything else. You know, I, I mean, I guess I already own everything else, free and clear. But I want to own my house and that truck 100% debt free by by this, or, uh, by uh, September 18th, 2020. I've got a long way to go, and I do not have any credibility in doing things like that because I've never done it. But I'm telling everybody that's what I'm going to do. So get in the mode of practicing putting that out there in the world, even if you've never done it. I mean, I guarantee you talk to any entrepreneur that's like you, that got their start just like you, and they didn't have credibility either. Yeah? So um, actually, we've got a little bit of time, but uh, extreme ownership. If, uh, if anybody would like to chat in or come off of mute, and do that same thing with all these 93, we got, we got 95 people now, 95 witnesses. You are more than welcome to come off and say, and you know, just, let's just take like five seconds. Hey, Dane. Go ahead, brother. Hey, it's uh, Jeff Wilson. Um, you know, this is, this is amazing, man, because from your, uh, from your last training last week, I actually commented, uh, at the presentation that, you know, I, I love Dane's story, but I want to hear more about what it was like when he was getting started. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what you talked real. about today. So that's awesome. Yeah. My question is when you, uh, when you're striking up those conversations uh, with a new person, uh, you know, just someone that you just met, um, what what is your take on, uh, you know, meeting with them one to one or having a conversation or just inviting them down to an event, uh, based on that initial conversation? Do you just kind of plant the seed and then follow up with them later, or how do you how do you approach that? Um, it depends. The most success I have ever had ever had was to invite them in the moment because they're excited, right? In that moment, it's emo I mean, it's emotional. It's crazy. Every human being, I don't care if you're male or female, we make decisions based on emotion. And, and if you actually read some recent studies, men actually make more emotional decisions than women. It's crazy. And they proved it. Um, so, so in the moment, if you can get them to commit, you know, and, and I whip out my phone, I'll, I'll do it on, I'll do it on my iPad so that, uh, and sorry, let me, let me put you on mute. Cause I think, I'm not sure everybody can hear that, uh, that background, that background, uh, I can hear myself, but, uh, so just in case, if, if we need to say, to talk more than, then you can come back off of mute, but, uh, um, oh crap. What was I saying? Uh, oh, calendar. So I literally, when, when somebody tries to hand me their business card, you know, it, you know, like things like that. I say, you know, why do you want to, why do you want to give this to me? I say, Oh, I want to talk. I say, well, I am a bit, I don't carry business cards. I am a business card. So if you want to talk, then let's get something on my calendar. And I whip out my phone and I say, all right. And I, I, I hold it in front of them and I say, all right, when are you available? And then we'll put something in and say, all right, let's talk. Let's talk this day, this time. 
And depending on, and depending on their uh, excitement, I'll either give them 15 minutes of my time or if they seem like, yeah, like I, I really want to like learn about this, then I'll, I'll invite them. I'll just invite them directly to the meeting and be like, cool. What are you doing Thursday night, 7 PM that you couldn't get out of, you know, if, if they're local. Um, but if they're not, then, and oh man, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give away my regional training if I, if I go too far into this. Um, but essentially I get them on my calendar one way or another, whatever we're going to do, 15 minute call, come to a meeting or, or we're going to sit down one-on-one -on -one and do what I, I call, I call it the roadmap conversation, but basically where we're going to draw on a napkin, I will schedule one of those three things. So, so, and, and literally I like refuse taking business cards from people because it's just going to get lost or I'm going to put it in my phone and throw it away. If somebody hands me a business card, I say, I say, you know what? I don't do business cards. I am a business card. If, if you would like to talk business, then let's schedule a time to talk business. And I whip out my calendar. So great question. I hope I answered, I hope I answered that the way that you wanted. Um, anybody else come off and, and want to share? Um, let's see. Miss, Mrs. Blame patiently. <laughs> great job, Joanne. Love it. Uh, cool. Anybody else? Hey, Dane, how do, you, how do you put themselves out there? What's up, Jerry? How you doing, Dane? Hey, man, how do you feel about your five star now? <laughs> oh, dude, I actually, it's weird. It, it's so weird. It's inevitable. I have to call him every couple of months because as things grow and as, things, I, as I reach new heights that I never thought possible, I mean, it is the weirdest feeling to be to be reaching goals that my 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 ancient goals i mean my goals today would have been like my goals goals my goals 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 and so every every couple of months i call him up and i'm like dude i just want to thank you so much for having that courage to reach out to me and say hey dan you should come check this out and and i knew the guy like i worked with him and so we had that previous relationship. And so, you know, he, he had some of that, uh, you know, what, what do you call it? Where you don't want somebody to hate you if you, if they, if they join Renatus or whatever, if you ask them to join Renatus, like, like he overcame that, he invited me down and I said, yeah, let's do this. But now, dude, I call him and say, dude, thank you so much. I can't even believe what we're doing. Like, it, yeah, I put in the work, but you made the connection, you know? So every couple months. If it is to be, it's up to me. Exactly. So anybody else want to share a credibility zero goal that they've never done before, but they're gonna do it in front of all these people. We got, we got 89 people, 89 witnesses. <laughs> I think I just saw Jeremy come off. Yeah, I was actually, um, one of the things that I've taken on is I wanted to learn the conversation setup that I've heard you and a few other people use when you're having a conversation and then put it into play. I don't even know how to use this strategy yet, so, mm -hmm. but it's a way of being of service so that when I'm having a conversation with someone, then we go ahead and put their order in, and then we do the, the education activation. Mm-hmm. And I've heard you refer to that several times, but it's not something that we've been using in the markets that I've been working in. So uh -huh. one of my commitments is to figure out what that is and then to put it in place a minimum of three times this week and, you know, and then, and, and go between now and next Wednesday, what would it take for me to have three new conversations, create that mm -hmm. and get somebody's started so that I can have in queue a scheduled time that we will be having their activation, their education activation party. So does that, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Is, I love uh, it, man. If, if I, if I say too much, I will give away my regional training. So if, if you're coming to that, I will see you there. If unfortunately, not, I'm, I'm in Atlanta. Um, and I will not be making the Salt Lake regional, but I'll be no in worries. the Atlanta regional. Um, I'll, I'll be and, doing some preview or I'll, I'll be doing some post stuff on it afterwards. So, okay. 
So we'll still talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. So that's, that's what I want to make sure. Cause I've never done that strategy and awesome. I'm, I'm making a commitment to, to get that, learn it and then be able Good. to a- amplify it with others. Good. A lot of the top income earners are doing stuff like this. So great. All right. I got a chat here. Anybody else come off the of mute. Dane, I haven't had a $20,000 a month yet. Came close, but I plan to do it within a year's time. Tyler Mead, you are the man. And everybody saw that. Everybody heard it. You got all these witnesses, brother. You're going to do it. We're all rooting for you. All right. I got time for one more person that wants to come off. <laughs> You're the this man. is Ashley Jenna Garcia. And one of my hey, goals. Hey, what's up? How are you? <laughs> So one of my huge goals in life is to make $10 million in income per year with active passive okay. investments. So Did you say 10 billion? 10 million. 10 so, yes. million. So you don't want to be a billionaire. Smokes. So there All you right. go, everybody. That's, Dream big. That's, an ele- that's a big elephant. So, <laughs> so set a, do you have any um, bite size? Do you have any elephant bite size goals as well? Yes. It's first, obviously I'm just scaling it. So like 10,000 per month and then double that 50,000 and doing things of that nature. So yeah. Good. You will. You will. Thank you. Yeah. All right. One more. And then we'll call it a morning. Dean. Allison. Yes. Uh, this is, I'm Allison Marshall and I will be a five star by the uh, last date in November. Yes, that's awesome. And you're already asking yourself, how am I going to do this, right? Oh, no, if I've I... got a plan. I've been oh, good. working on, a, I've, I've been getting out there and meeting people, which is really crazy because I'm super oh, shy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I want to hear your progress. So I, I'll, I'll be watching you these next several weeks. Fair enough? Okay. Yes. And I want to hear from you. So cool. Congratulations. You will just because you, all these, I mean, all these witnesses, they're rooting for you. They're sending positive energies your way. So cool. Well, thank you all. Uh, That's let's call it a morning. I'll see you all next week and uh, excited to hear some follow-up from this conversation today. So have a great one guys.